Hey everyone, I'm Erin Fletcher, Continuing Education Instructor at North Bennett Street School. And I'm Colin Urbina, I'm also a Continuing Education Instructor at North Bennett. Erin, what are we going to do today? Today, Colin and I are going to show you how to make paste papers. This is a really fun technique that has been used since the 16th century to create decorative papers. Colin and I have made these a lot and we use them for our book binding projects or box making projects, but you can use these as wrapping paper or other craft projects. If it's a really beautiful paper, you could even put it on your fridge or frame it. So there's a lot of items that you're gonna to wanna to gather in order to make your paste papers. But first let's talk about the paste and the paint mixture. So in this jar, I have just the paste. There's no paint in here yet. Paste is a really easy adhesive you can make at home, and there are a lot of different recipes, um, you, and there are a lot of different flours that you can use. I've used all-purpose flour to make my paste. Working over a double boiler, I mixed one part flour to four parts water, and I stirred this continuously with a whisk for about six minutes to, to get the consistency of cream of wheat. How about you, Colin? My recipe is a little bit different. I worked and just dumped mine into a pot and my recipe is a little bit of wheat flour and a little bit of rice flour. And it's also mixed to the consistency to cream of wheat. Cool. Once you've made the paste, it needs to completely cool before you mix in your paint. I've already mixed my paint, Colin has as well. I used uh, a tempera paint. And I used just an acrylic paint. Both of these are fine to use. Um, making paste papers can get really messy, and the messy part is certainly the paint. So you're gonna wanna wear an apron or old clothes and cover your work surface. I've covered my table with a garbage bag that I just cut up so it would cover the whole table. I have a tarp. You're also going to want a variety of tools. So I'm using some foam brushes. I'll use these to spread my um, paste paint mixture onto the paper. And I can also use these later to create um, some decoration. Looks like Colin is just using some bristle brushes, like house paint brushes. Either would work just fine. Then I have a collection of other tools over here that I'll use to create some designs. So I have these combs. These silicone ones are ones you can find at craft stores. They're used by ceramicists to create patterns onto clay. But you can also make your own out of old container lids. I also just kind of rummaged around my house to gather some other things that I think might make some interesting designs. They might not work, but they might. It's always fun to just play around with things but note that uh, they might get kind of destroyed from the paint. So don't use anything that is really precious to you or anything that you use in the kitchen. I've grabbed um, just an old rubber stamp of this cute little rat. Um, this is a sewing tool that has a spiky wheel on it. And then this is a lid to um, a candle. It might make some great circles, we'll see. Colin, what do you have? I have the same yogurt lid containers, and I have one of these great tools for clay. And I also have this wood grain tool, and you'll see how that's used later. And then the other tool that you can use are your fingers. We'll show you how to use those later as well. So to make your paste papers, of course, you're going to need paper. Colin already has a piece of paper laid out. We're using something called Mohawk Superfine. It's a machine made medium weight paper that's really durable and it's gonna hold up to all the moisture that we put into it. You can also get printmaking papers or mold made papers. These are papers you can find at your local art store. You can certainly try this with copier paper that you have at home or um, other colored papers, but just know that they might not hold up well to the moisture, but just test it out. I have also here water with um, a sponge. I'm gonna use this to dampen out my paper. Colin has a spray bottle that he's going to use for that. You really need to dampen your paper before you apply the paste um, paint mixture. 
Finally, and this is most important, is you're going to want to arrange a space in your house that is very low traffic to place your wet decorative papers once you finish them. They're going to need about a full day to dry. So Colin and I are going to show you a few techniques for making paste papers with the tools that we have. But remember, this is a chance for you to really play around um, with various objects and create really fun patterns. And if you end up not liking something, you can simply brush over your paper and start again. So away we go. So as you can see, you can turn these out really fast. They're fun. You can be creative. You can make all sorts of different patterns. They're, it's a really great project to just go and have a good time with. Yeah, and we just showed you a very, very small percentage of what's possible with paste papers. It's really going to depend on the tools that you have in front of you and what your imagination, you know, the sky's the limit. So um, have fun making paste papers and then use them for other fun projects. Bye. Thanks for watching.